Hi, y'all. I have purposely avoided posting and commenting on Facebook and other social media about the surviving R. Kelly program done by Lifetime. However, tonight I was listening to a video, watching a video, I should say, of a sure star goddesses, and it wasn't about R. Kelly, but someone asked her a question, and she decided to give her viewpoints on the question that came up to her about R. Kelly in that program. She mentioned one thing that struck me strong. She says that she empathizes, but she doesn't internalize. She also says for us to be mindful of how we use our energies and how we allow people to put on our energies, and that sometimes programming triggers purposely the emotions of women. And we can get to a place, this is my point of view, we can get to a place where our emotions master us rather than us mastering our emotions. So I wanted to share that, and my viewpoint I'm getting ready to express about the R. Kelly matter is that there are components that some people have not focused on. Most of the focus that I've seen is on what he has done, his predatory conduct, his sexual abuses, allegedly, because I don't know how much of the programming is true, how much is embellished. I pretty much do believe that overall the content is accurate. But again, I want to use the word allegedly just in case. My position on the matter is the first thing that struck me the strongest was when R. Kelly had the interview that he indicated that he was abused sexually from the time he was seven until he was about 14 by some family members. Now, there is no way that seven years of being sexually abused as a child did not have major impact on how he turned out as a man. It had to have quite an effect on how he developed mentally and spiritually. What it did to his mental fitness, his psyche, I have no clue. But I am convinced that it was instrumental in how he was molded as an adult. And no, I'm not excusing the predatory conduct, the abuse, allegedly. But I'm just giving some rational insertions as to what led to it in my unexpert concept of it. And I believe largely I'm on point. Because, again, I've not had that experience myself, but I know that had to have a bearing on how he, you know, bore all these unsavory fruits in his life. Now, the young girls, of course, when we are young, we are impressionable, easily impressed, easily influenced, and easily drawn. Now, the fact that he had those sexual experiences as a child and they molded him into the predator that he ultimately became, allegedly, and him having fame and money, gave him more avenues, more routes, and more means to be able to seduce these women because of what he could offer, and did offer, and did give, and provide. And so, I'm not judging the young girls because, again, they were young, minors, and he was a grown man. But, again, you cannot, anybody reasonable cannot discount that he was a grown man who had seven years of sexual abuse as a child. And he indicated that the things he was exposed to as a child sexually, no child should have been ex uh, exposed to. And even, uh, what's his name, Tyler Perry came on Oprah years ago and said that when he was abused by a relative, that his body betrayed him. So even though these people were sexually abused, this one woman came on Facebook and said she knows two females who were sexually abused as children, and now they have a high desire, a heavy desire for sex so much so that they get involved in unhealthy relationships because they are highly driven uh, to have sex. And I have a friend of mine, and him and I had a discussion about the R. Kelly issue last night on the phone, and it was a rational conversation, beneficial, constructive, we didn't hurl insults and call all kinds of, um, uh, you know, disparaging names towards R. Kelly and didn't bash him, and we didn't excuse his conduct either. But this particular friend of mine you know, 
has been abused as a uh, was abused as a child, and he indicated that he has a high sex drive, and he said his ex wife was also abused as a child, and she has a high sex drive, and he says that he doesn't know why it is, but it is known that some who have been abused as children are heavenly in love with fucking. That's what he called it, fucking. So. I don't know either because I'm not an expert. I haven't had such experiences, but that was his, his you know, experience. And this other woman that was on Facebook talking about the two women that she knew that were, you know, heavily driven to unhealthy relationships because of the sex enjoyment stemming from, you know, being so early exposed to it as children. She said that one of the women is, as a grown woman, still having sex with the cousin who abused her as a child. And she's doing this willingly. So she enjoyed it, you know. As a child, and then as an adult, she chooses to still indulge with this particular cousin. Now, the relatives that you know drew R. Kelly into this, no one gave their names. I don't believe they were brought up on any charges, but they were instrumental in him becoming the predator that he ultimately became. And if he didn't get any counseling or any kind of professional help to correct that conduct, then that has to be taken into account as well. And I don't, you know, want anyone to believe that I don't have some empathy for the young girls who were victimized by that conduct, allegedly. But, again, you cannot subtract seven years of sexual abuse and say that did not have a major bearing on the man he developed into. And when you look at some of his stage performances and some of his videos... They are highly sexually charged. The humping and the bumping and the grinding and all that, and the, the lyrics in his songs, that stems from being prematurely exposed to sex as a child for seven years. We're talking seven years, okay? So, yes, that formed him into what he became. And so I just want that you know point to be emphasized as well. And so the... Consequences, he, he has to endure the consequences of his actions. Yes, he does. But that was something that, you know, profoundly affected me that it had been that many years. And the, and also the betrayal to have your own family to abuse you. It's one thing to be abused by strangers, but a lot of these people are molested by so-called people you would expect to be trusted. I mean, it, it, it's just, that's, that's another component to the whole equation. You know, and it wasn't just one family member from, from what he said. It was like several. And then his brother said he was abused by at least one family member. So that is a horrific experience. And you cannot wipe that slate clean from the trauma involved in that happening to you over that prolonged period of time. That is just, you know, it's trauma that, you know, I don't think anyone ever fully recovers from it. And no, everyone that's sexually abused does not you know, abuse others. But there have been reports I've read over the years that quite a few of those who have been molested become molesters themselves. It, it becomes, you know, a chain. It happens, you know, and the fact that he, like I said, is a rich man, was a rich man, that just gave him extra quote-unquote ammunition to be able to, you know, do his predatory activities. So I just want, you know, uh, people to look behind the veil sometimes and to not let emotions be our masters and to, you know, think things more thoroughly uh, through. Would I want my young teenage uh, relative or loved one or associate or anyone connected with me to be around such people? No. And parents should be more protective of their children, be more aware of what they're doing, who they're with, where they're going. So the guardians and the parents, sometimes they drop the ball. So no, um, I would not trust any young people around him. But at the same time, I do not want this part of the story to be focused on in um, insulting him. And, and, and then some of these people who are, are lodging these cruel insults and things towards him, you have to think about, what if that were your son? He would be, you know, out of order. He would be a predator, but he would still be your child. And and if that was your daughter who was uh, a predator on a, a underage young boy, you know, you would, you know, know that your child was a predator, but that would be still your child. And the average parent would still love that child and uh, hopefully get some help for that child. So you got to sometimes all these women out here that are 
dissing R. Kelly with all these cruel insults and things like that. I understand your emotions or, you know, or, 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 or where they are, but just flip it and say, that's my son. You know, you would still love him if you are any kind of decent parent, despite, you know, his conduct. You would, you know, do, I'm sure what you could to help him to conquer it. So just don't look at it from the standpoint of him being a monster. Him, you know, he should be in jail. He should be, you know, facing severe consequences. Yes, you know, again, I don't excuse the conduct, but you got to look at it, you know, in more than one way and let your energies, you know, focus on some of the other aspects behind the veil. So I want to thank y'all for listening and bye now.